Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Manscaped has the revolutionary electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. It's cordless, it's waterproof, and it's guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts or your chest because you can use it upstairs and downstairs. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Earlier you were talking about how you weren't doing, you know, the OnlyFans and all that kind of stuff because you didn't want to feel, ever feel like any kind of resentment towards working an adult, which you had not experienced, even though you're not really working anymore. So that brings me to the question of, you know, something that's been a hot topic lately with Mia Khalifa coming out, talking about her experience in the adult industry. And I thought that you said some really poignant things on Twitter about it. And I know a lot of people in the industry are really on fire about it. So what is your opinion on that whole thing? You know, I mean, I think it's like really sad because I don't know. I have a lot of empathy for these people because Mia is not the first one. Um, you know, I think yeah. before that, there were, there's always someone who gets a whole lot of mainstream attention for basically saying like how bad of experience they had in porn you know, God forbid they put the spotlight on someone who loves their job. Right. Um, that doesn't sell as well. Yeah, it does not. And yeah. so because and people I, want something that pushes the narrative that they've always, they, they've right. been fed their whole lives that porn is evil. So like right. they want something that, that reinstitutes their belief in that. Right. And that's, yeah, exactly. That reinforces their narrative. And like, for instance, I know like the Hot Girls Wanted, like, movie that came out, like, a few, like, I don't know, like, five years ago, whatever. Um, really interesting because uh, that was being shot right when I first got into the business. And initially, uh, Dakota Sky and I were supposed to be, like, the girls in that documentary. And it's just interesting to think how differently that would have turned out um, if they had gone with us. But at that point I'd probably been in the business two months. I was like still shooting in Florida. I hadn't come out to LA yet. Um, but basically, you know, there was this new agency that I just started in Florida and that's very skeevy and they know, I think this about them. And, you know, I mean, I went to the model house and it's just like, it looked like a crack den. There's like mattresses on the floor. Like he was sleeping with the girls. He was like, there were models for him. You know, it was just all around like gross. And they were like, oh, perfect for our documentary about the porn industry because it's the worst thing that exists. You know, can and, I tell uh, you something really funny what? just real quick before yeah. I forget? Because we're talking about the very first Hot Girls Wanted. Yeah. And like that was the the anthology that I was part of. And it was on the basically on the adult industry on the East Coast, and mm -hmm. they followed a certain agent. And so I ended up like, you know, talking, knowing, getting to the, the producers because of my segment that I ended up doing a couple of years later. And one of the producers told me that she got pink eye from that house. Oh my God. Just from being there producing Jesus. I, was like, I really believe it. I went there. It was when I was first getting into the business and I was like the guy who runs that house. Like I, I won't even mention him by name, but you know, I've literally two months in the industry, like I was at some like party with him and he's like, Carter, I feel like you don't like me. And I'm like, I really fucking don't like you're gross. Like you fuck the girls who work for you, like completely unprofessional. And you literally have like a model house that you think is like so cool. And it's like girls sleeping on a fucking like shitty mattress on the floor. Like it's disgusting. You know, I could tell I was like, you're in this for like your own personal gain, like to basically have hot, young, impressionable women around you that you can manipulate into fucking you. And I do not agree with that, you know? So that was, a, I clearly, I know why they picked that. Like they wanted that story. And those girls that were the main girls in that, like when I first moved to California or wasn't moving out here, but I was coming out here to work, those girls and I, like we were tight. Like we would stay in hotels together you know, so I kind of saw that whole story unfold from like my perspective. And then when I watched mm -hmm. the, the documentary, it was like, wow, this is like not what I saw, you know? Um, so clearly they're always going for those like types of stories. That's what they want mm -hmm. to push. 
And um, so as a result, every few years, there's someone who makes a lot of mainstream press. They complain about porn. It's so awful. Everyone can go, we always knew porn was evil. Sex work is terrible. It's exploitive. And and then society goes on feeling good about stigmatizing sex, sex workers and sex workers get pushed farther into their own little world. Um, so, you know, but at the same time, I do think there are are stories of girls being highly taken advantage of, of being used, of being manipulated. I think some girls get into the business way too young, and I don't think that they have any idea of what they're getting into. I was 22 when I got into porn. I researched it like crazy on the internet. Like I knew I was going to be a Spiegler girl. Like, you know, I was like, okay, this guy is legit. He represents all these girls like that, like love him. Like that's, you know, who I want to kind of, so I had kind of this idea of the industry going in. I knew how to navigate it and I was much older and more comfortable with myself and more confident. Um, but you know, a lot of girls get in at 18 and they are impressionable. They're easy to manipulate and bad things do happen as they do in every industry. Um, but unfortunately those girls' voices are amplified so much. They drown out everyone who had a good experience. But I also always have this like kind of like wrestle inside me because I do have empathy for their situation. I mean, I've had bad things happen to me both in the porn industry and doing mainstream stuff. I've experienced terrible things. And so, you know, I do have empathy for them and I always feel bad because it's like your story is valid, you know, and I think they have every right to talk about this person took advantage of me, this person manipulated me, you know, whatever, this person assaulted me, whatever it was. And there's nothing wrong with them sharing those stories. But I think the problem is, is that because the media latches onto those and only shares those stories and just kind of skates over everybody else who's been in the industry 20 years and loves it, um, as a result, the industry gets a lot of resentment. And something I learned while being in the industry was like, you know, it's a very tight knit group and people are like family. I think a lot of people date in the industry. A lot of their, maybe most of their friends are in the industry. You go to work, obviously, in the industry. So as a result, and when you go outside of that, you're either like a freak on display of like, oh, wow, look at this porn star, or you're like, ew, like this dirty whore, you know? So you feel most at home with people who are in the industry. And as a result, it's kind of this very tight knit thing. So when someone comes out and says, I had this bad experience, you know, the industry is very resistant to that. They, Mm -hmm. you know, are like, fuck you, you know, because you're pushing the stigma but then it's also hard because I'm like, and I, I empathize with that because I'm like, you are, you're pushing the stigma. You're feeding into this mainstream narrative that society wants us to believe that sex work is inherently exploitive. And it's not. I mean, sex work is really like any other job. You know, it can be exploitive. You can be manipulated. You can do things you don't want to do. You know, of course that stuff can happen. It can happen in any aspect of your life. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what it is. And the main reason that happens like to sex workers a lot of times is because they have no recourse. You have no way, you know, if you're, if you're an escort and you get raped on a job and you go to the police, they're going to arrest you for escorting, right? So this stigma that we have around sex workers causes the industry to be very closed off you know, they are not open to criticism, which can be bad. I think sometimes people come forward with good stories that we should learn from and be like, yeah, you're right. That company is shitty and we need to get rid of them. But people immediately close off. They close ranks. They say, we want nothing to do with you. You're bitter. Get out of here. And Mm -hmm. I do understand both sides because I understand the industry. They're worried about the stigma that's being forced on them. And I think that is something that these people need to consider but then I also do understand these people trying to share their stories. Right. But as far as Mia Khalifa, you know, I thought she was dope. Like I had invited her to some of my DJ shows when she was living in Austin. I was like, oh, like we should like hang out. You know, she was like really funny. She had this big personality. And I thought, you know, I – and people were hating on her from the beginning because she got all this fame really quickly and mainstream fame. And people are resentful of that because it's denied for a lot of sex workers, right? So she always kind of was hated on from the beginning. And and same thing that happened with Bell Knox, where I see that happening to someone, I always want to reach out and be like, hey, like I'm your friend in the industry because 
I understand like you're going through the stigma of being a sex worker, but then also the other sex workers like don't fuck with you. <laughs> That's like a very hard place to be. Um, right. So I've always like made the effort to like go to those people and be like, hey, like I'm cool with you, you know, whatever. And, you know, so I thought she was cool and I had made that effort. And so then to see her come out with this story later, it was like, I don't know, it's just like, you didn't think for a second of how this could affect everyone else in the industry, you know? And I just don't like that she's pushing this whole story that she's like a champion of sex workers, but yet she won't listen to any of them. She won't talk to any of them. Like the only people that she'll talk to are people who agree with her. And mm -hmm. the thing is, is if you're really going to be a champion for someone, then you need to listen to all of their opinions. You need to understand all the experiences. And that is not what she's doing. You know, it's just like, this is bad because what happened to me was bad. And she says she's sex work, sex work positive, but like, I don't see that. Like you can say that, but when you're only sharing negative experiences, you're not like saying, hey, this girl's fucking awesome. And she has a great career in the industry and has had an amazing time. Like go check out her OnlyFans, you know, kind of thing. Like where you're putting a pause, shining a positive light on it as well. And if all you're doing is saying, my experience was bad, this company is bad, this industry is bad, it's exploitive, that's all you're pushing, you know? And I, yeah. I just, there's wish, nothing, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, there's nothing like constructive in her criticism. Right. It's not like a, hey, I had a bad experience. These are the mistakes that I made. These are the people that I work with that I shouldn't have worked with. Like, here's what other girls should avoid. Mm hmm you know, as opposed to, um, you know, being like every, it's all bad. Everything's bad. It's all exploitative. Um, my experience speaks for everybody's Everyone's. experience in the adult industry. Well, and you know, as far as that constructive criticism and like looking back on how you could have done things differently, I think that something I'm like kind of nervous to talk about because people are very sensitive, but you know, I do kind of, I think that's important that you know, if sex work is a regular job and it's normal, then like you need to approach that like you would any other job and like you can always do things better. And there's kind of this idea that I've seen kind of being floated around and pushed that like, you know, we're like constantly victims and like even some like sex workers who are sex worker positive and like love their careers are kind of pushing this of like, you know, they need to be babied. And basically, you know, you can, like, they don't want to look back and think, well, maybe I could have communicated better or I could have done something differently. And that's tough because, you know, people think, oh, it's sex. Like, you are just a victim. If anything bad happens to you during sex, you're just a victim. And just because you're a victim doesn't mean there's not things to learn from it, you know? Right. Um, I mean, I think of things like, and maybe I'm just kind of a person who I've had bad things happen to me. But a lot of times, I don't think it was my fault because I put myself in that situation. You know, I don't think, oh, it's me. I'm a bad person. No, the person who did it is the bad person. They did the bad thing. But I can look back and be like, okay, what did I learn from this experience? And how right. can I avoid these types of people and this kind of interactions in the future? And unfortunately, like I, I know like Kate Kennedy kind of posted this thing about you know, here's how you can like avoid being sexually assaulted. And people got really mad at her. Uh, like, yeah, they said told she her got, like, that she was vic victim blaming. Victim blaming. And I know that that's not what she was doing at all because at the end of the day, like if someone's going to hurt you and do something against your will, like they're going to do it anyway. And there's nothing really you can do to stop that. And so it's not that if anything happens to you, you shouldn't have dressed that way or you shouldn't have gone there alone. Like, no, 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 no. Like ultimately they are the bad guy. They did the bad thing. But that doesn't mean that there's not things that you can learn to because predators and bad people exist in every, all over the place. I mean, I think like some of the worst things I experienced was from an ex-boyfriend that I dated while I was in porn. And, you know, he is just super, he's slut shamey, just like some of the worst like trauma that I have sexually is like from this person. And that mm -hmm. wasn't even in the industry, you know? So predators, manipulators, sociopaths, narcissists, all these people that will take advantage of you and cause you trauma, they can come up at 
any point in your life. You don't just do sex work and that's how you come across them. It could be your boyfriend. It could be your boss at fucking Dunkin' Donuts. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, and so looking and saying, how can I identify these kinds of behaviors, avoid it, and also learn how to handle myself when I am in one of these situations is a really positive thing. Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Their lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that will not only not nick or snag your nuts, but can also be used on your chest hair. If you get it in the perfect package 3.0, it will come with a bunch of liquid formulas to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day. And for a limited time, you can also get a free travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs that come with it. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.